The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. We're back. Welcome to Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE, and we're live here at EMC World 2014. My name is Dave Vellante, uh, one of the founders at wikibon.org, and SiliconANGLE's CUBE is a live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we're, we're double-clicking, drilling down into, into partnerships. A big part of EMC World is customers, but also business partners that come in, innovate together, go to market together. You know, you can't, you can't do it alone in this business. You know, Joe Tucci a lot, talks a lot about um, uh, Cooperation, so you got you know uh, strange bedfellows like EMC and Oracle doing stuff together, and then you've got uh, other service provider partners and, and consultancies uh, like Capgemini. So Terry Breen is here; he's the senior vice president of global strategic sales and partners at EMC, and he's joined by Charlie Lee to my right. Charlie's in the middle, who's the senior vice president and the head of global channels and partners at Capgemini. Gentlemen, welcome to the cube. Thank Good you. to be here. Good to be here. Thanks, Dave. So Charlie, let me start with you. Um, EMC World, uh, big show. A lot of customers here. You guys are a, a, a top consultancy systems integrator. Really where all the, 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 the rubber meets the road when it comes to value is really what you guys are all about, building solutions. Uh, talk about EMC World and what, what, it, what it means to you guys. Well, EMC World has been phenomenal for us. Uh, last year we uh, actually uh, worked with uh, Terry's team to develop some big bets between the two companies. Uh, we decided that uh, we were going to make several strategic plays around all the federations of EMC. Uh, around the business data lake uh, with Pivotal orchestration, uh, cloud orchestration with VMware. And then of course we also had a major play around uh, Latin America through Brazil. We built a joint business unit. And that strategy was actually laid last year at this event. And 12 months later, when we fast forward this, we, we realized the, the vast value and, and the great execution we had over the last 12 months. So, so Terry, Terry, talk about, um, the, let's go back a little bit, because I remember when you guys announced the 2013, the, the deal in Brazil, um, what was the impetus, why Brazil, uh, how, and how's it been going? Well, Brazil was, was fantastic, because we wanted to not naturally a large opportunity, uh, but when we look at Brazil, Cap was trying to get in there in a big way, we were, Cap got involved in an investment in a new company, uh, they invited us to join them, so actually we have a venture, it's a joint venture between the, uh, the two companies. Uh, we're, we're attacking the market from a financial service perspective, from an oil, gas, natural resources, and so this is a, a you know a venture between uh, Cap and, and EMC that we're uh, about 18 months uh, under our belt right now. So the impetus was opportunity. You, you go after it jointly, you sort of de-risk uh, some of the opportunity as well. Um, and so, uh, what's the uptake been? Well, I think one of the things that's great about the joint business unit that we build is that our ability to transform the clients. Right, as Brazil is really going from kind of the first generation, many of the companies are actually trying to jump to the latest generation without having to go through the second generation, which is moving to the cloud era. So one of the things that we've been able to do in that market is really work together to transform our clients as Brazil is getting ready for the World Cup and then the Olympics to really join the latest generation, the greatest generation, the cloud era. And all the solutions that we built together, co-innovated together, has really helped many of our clients there really realize that the, the cloud vision. So yeah, can I, yeah, can I add one thing on that? Yeah. Because you look at the impetus of it, you had you had a company by the name of CPM Braxis, which was a Brazilian yes, right. bait built uh, re reseller SI managed services company. Interestingly, Cap and EMC at the same time were both looking at that company, and then eventually, you know, uh, Cap took an ownership uh, view of the company, and then we came in as an investor. So what it was is just serendipitous that we were all looking at the same company at the same time to expand both of our businesses in the same geography. All right, now Charlie, talk a little bit about, uh, we were talking off camera about the, the Federation, so it's not just an EMC partnership. Uh, um, the Federation is fascinating t to me. I mean, it's, it's you know, so many companies, you've seen, we had Jeffrey Moore on last week, and, and he was talking about crossing the chasm, of course. It seems that this is a, a brilliant uh, architecture that Tucci and team have set up to uh, essentially navigate you know, th through the, the chasm and identify opportunities. But sometimes it's probably hard for a partner to figure out, okay, I'm a partner with this company and that company and that company. You, you recently, let's start there. You, you, today, I guess, you won an award, right? The, the Federation right. Award, what was that all about? So we won the Federation uh, Award, Partner of the Year Award, and I think it really speaks to the fact that we work with the entire Federation. I mean, I, I, Capgemini was one of the first SIs to embrace the Federation message. 
which really means that when we work with each of the companies in the federation, it allows us to be completely independent. So if I work with VMware, I could also work with Amazon, I could also work with other companies, IBM and so on. But when we put the federation power together, when we're able to work, you know, Cloud Foundry, Pivotal, on the big, you know, on the big data front, when we orchestrate all of that through the cloud with uh, VMware, and when we have uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the best storage on the market that we actually put in our data centers that we serve our clients and reduce the total cost of ownership of our clients. When you put that whole stack together, the power is immense. So it really gives us the flexibility as well as the value of, of the integrated federation. So give us an ex a specific example of where you're working uh, in the federation outside of you know, EMC Classic, EMC II. Is, sure, know. we really work with all of them. Uh, we're, we're one of the largest the partners for VCE. We co-innovated a solution with uh, Pivotal this year called the Business Data Lake, which is being launched. Uh, we also have an exclusive relationship in building the orchestration platform or brokering platform together uh, with VMware. Uh, and then of course, uh, finally, we're, we're doing a lot of new work with the IG division. We're actually starting to build new cloud solutions around case management for the government. And uh, it's actually taken off quite well for both of us. If you want to keep a Cap Gemini excited about our company, we got to bring the Federation to it. Think about what they do. They're business consultants, technology consultants. You go after your industries like retail and financial services and manufacturing. For us to excite them, we got to give them every tool we have, and that's why we got to get the Pivotals and the RSAs and the EMCs and the, the VMwares and the VCs all involved to keep them excited because they need all the piece parts to solve their business problems. Yeah. So you guys are obviously looking for partners that um, sort of are like-minded. You, know, you guys have been talking all week about the third platform. Yeah. Um, so, but at the same time, you got a lot of customers that are sort of in N minus one. You know, generations, a lot of business being done there. How do you balance those two? Well, I think one of the things that Capgemini is doing a lot of, and clients ask us all the time, is that while they're managing that second platform, they're also looking for an edge. That edge is innovation, which is maybe I will not embrace the entire third platform, but I need to start thinking about it. I need to start you know, approaching certain areas. So maybe there's a pilot around mobility. Maybe there's a pilot around the cloud. Maybe there's a pilot around big data. You know, we work together around all the federation because we're able to leverage the value of that second platform, the storage, but also take advantage of the co-innovation that we're doing around business data lakes, uh, in, in areas of cloud, uh, and also areas around mobility. You know, one of the things that we're trying to do in 2014 is to co-innovate around the mobility solution. As, as you know, you hear about the bring your own device culture. There's a lot of security concerns around that area. There's also huge amounts of opportunity around mobile device management, mobile applications management, and those are areas that we will continue to co-innovate between the two companies. And then I would say too is that. Um, we got to work with, with the Cap Gemini of the world, but specifically Cap, to be relevant both in, in platform two and three. I believe three years from now, it's going to be the same subject, it's just the, the distribution percentage between two and three will be changing, but our customers are still going to have a plenty of activity on platform two three years from now. So we got to make sure as we're working together, we are jointly relevant in both of those. So what are, let's talk about some of the trends that you guys are seeing in the, in the customer base. You know, the big four, cloud, mobile, social, big data. Let's, let's talk about cloud, because five years ago when you talked to IT practitioners about cloud, you know, they'd roll their eyes and, oh, cloud, it's just IT. <laughs> Everybody remembers the famous Larry Ellison rant at the Churchill Club. But now, uh, and I speak to you know, many, many IT practitioners, hundreds you know, throughout the year, I give a lot of speeches and so forth. They're embracing uh, the cloud. Um, what has changed, Charlie, and what are your customers doing uh, in that regard? I think the competitive and cost pressure has increased. You know, it continues to increase. And companies are looking for more of an edge uh, all the time. I mean, we have a lot of our financial customers who are looking to look at the cloud as a way to be more competitive. They want to lower their, their cost of their, their non-core business, if you will. So we see a lot of customers going, moving their HR, moving their you know, workforce automation, Salesforce automation all into the cloud because it's not some part of, considered part of their core business. And it really helps them provide a, a, a kind of a cost competitive edge. Uh, Terry, I, let me follow up with you on that because around that time when everybody was rolling their eyes, um, you guys had a big, big focus on private cloud mm -hmm. and that's evolving. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that a little bit. Well, obviously, we, we came at it directly uh, private cloud. We actually really see it in three areas. We got private, we got hybrid, we got public. We actually need to play in all three. You know, the activity is, is, there's still a lot of public cloud activity out there. We understand a different price point, different economics on there. So we, as a company, we really need to play in all three of them. I, need, I, gotta have the, I gotta have a portfolio across three to be successful out there. Let's talk about another you know, mega trend, Charlie, which is big, big data. You guys obviously involved in, sounds like co-development with, with Pivotal. Let's actually start there. 
uh, and then talk about some of the trends. Specifically, what is that like doing that, that type of co-development? Where do you, what do you bring to the table? I mean, we kind of know what technology they bring to the table. Where do they leave off and you pick up and how do you sort of connect? Into so I think we, when we first engaged uh, Pivotal, it was actually before the company was actually uh, launched. Yeah, okay. We actually started to exchange some ideas around big data. What are the challenges? I think what we really bring to the table is our business and, and uh, sector expertise, right? We understand what banks are looking for. For example, banks are, you know, after the, the disaster we had in 2008 are really looking for risk aggregation. How do I aggregate all the risks of a bank and be able to make decisions in real time? Well, that type of scenario requires a deep understanding of the business uh, of the banks. And uh, for us to, I think the, the main thing is that we were able to bring various business cases or use cases or new business models that would be valuable to our clients if the technology would be able to support it. So while engaging with Pivotal, we were able to give them a lot of insight on how the technology should be designed to tackle real world problems. So we were able to go innovate around several use cases that are very relevant. And you bring that deep industry expertise, which that, they might not have. That's the secret, because you take, you know, you, we, we take those words, big data analytics, we sometimes put them all together, break them apart. The analytics side of it is very industry specific. You're going into a retail, or you're going into a telco, or you're going into a bank. You got to be able to drive that analytics, you got to have the industry expertise. That's exactly what Capgemini brings that we don't have, right? We bring the horsepower behind it on technology, but we don't have the depth to walk into a telco or a bank and really help drive the analytics, which is exactly what Capgemini really brings to us. That's the power. Charlie, everybody talks about how organizations need to be data-driven. You know, we take it as a fait accompli, um, and, and I think many actually are, are driving that way. Um, but I wonder if you could characterize that. What's happening in, in terms of that notion of data-driven? Is it people are sort of investing in new technologies that are going to drive new insights? Or are they rethinking their entire data architecture, their you know, traditional EDWs? Um, how do you see that playing out in the marketplace today? I think at the end of the day, it's really more about new business models, right? When you look at uh, companies like uh, T-Mobile creating new uh, cell phone packages that really disrupted the industry, they were able to do that because they were able to leverage the insight they gained from the data, the new data architecture. And they were able to put actionable plans around the insight. Right? A lot of companies today, the traditional BI, it's all about finding insight, but then they don't do anything about it. Right? Companies today are really looking at how can data drive a new set of business models that would allow me to gain a competitive edge. Isn't there a problem that customers face today in terms of the agility of that, uh, that EDW in terms of, isn't that one of the reasons why they can't act on it? Because by the time they figured out the market has changed, uh, or the, by the time they figured out the insight, the market has changed. Um, how is that changing? Yeah, absolutely. So, so in the past, the way you looked at data is that every organization within the company had different data standards. So the first thing that a consulting company would do is do a consolidation. Right, to do a migration, to do kind of a standardization of all the data. That takes a very long time. By the time that's all done, you know, the market's changed. Right? So the whole solution that we built, the business lake solution, data lake solution that we built with Pivotal, is all about looking at it on a completely different way. Dump all your unstructured data into a huge data lake, forget standardization and consolidation. Right? Leverage all the greatest technologies that we have with storage, the fast in-memory storage that we have today, to be able to give insights in real time without having to do all that you know, long two, three year journey of standardization and consolidation. When we talk about big data, sometimes we talk about it as if it's a brand new concept. And in certain industries, it flat out is not true. Mm. I mean, you get into an oil exploration company, they've been dealing with big data for 20 years now. That big data, big deal. Yeah, matter of <laughs> fact, when we talk big data, they say, yeah, it's an old term to us. <laughs> but what they have is they have access to the data problems, right? And that's, I actually think, where the technology is changing rapidly. Big data exists, but we had no access to it. Second thing is, how do you drive something out of it? How do you make value out of all of that massive data? And I think that's where there's a tremendous amount of work. We do some of it with technology. These guys do it tremendously with the you know, industry insight. So what's changing in terms of the access uh, model? It's, is it the, the, it's technology, obviously, and then maybe we can talk about people and process, but maybe we could drill into that a little bit. Well, I think it's speed, I think it's technology, I think it's being able to bring all of it together, various different forms of it and we couldn't do that. I mean, think about the large data warehouses we've all built over the last 20 years. Wonderful amount of information, no one could get anything out of it. Or you could, but it would take you know, large runs of information and it was, just, it was just not nimble enough. So Charlie, how are organizations, I mean, I, I look at people process technology, uh, Terry, I see you as technology and you guys as people in process, and, sure. and there's a, I know there's overlap there, obviously. Yeah. Um, but how are people specifically um, transforming their people and process to take advantage of this new data opportunity? Well, I think it's uh, quite a bit of a challenge for our clients because in the past, 
the realm of possibility wasn't there. Because the technology, there's a limitation. There's not enough storage, or it's too expensive, or it's not fast enough. Now that the storage market has completely changed, we continue to see cheaper and cheaper storage. We have technologies that can actually deal with petabytes of data in, in milliseconds, right? All that's possible. So the realm of possibility has shifted from the technology limitation to the business limitation. Can business analysts and consultants and customers think fast enough to create new models of what to do with the data? What can we do with all this data to create uh, new opportunities? And I think the governance around that is what's really key today. You hear a lot about um, the skill shortage specifically around data science. Is that um, an acute problem in your customer base? And, and how are companies dealing with that? Absolutely, the traditional uh, big data uh, engineers, if you will, are the ones that analyze the data. Today, that person has to understand programming. That person has to understand advanced mathematics, right? analysis, statistics. When you combine all of those skill sets together, it, it becomes kind of a superhuman that's very difficult to find. So I think it will take a couple of years for the industry to really start building a new set of knowledge and a new set of skill sets and, and, and uh, engineers that can really be qualified as what we call data scientists. There's you know, when you think lot. about the data, data scientists, I, you know, we have some in, on staff in our group, so I think we do a little bit of the priming of the pump, but yeah. the big pump's got to come from the cap Geminis of the world. Yeah, you guys have some educational programs. You know, I That's saw right. Tom Clancy in the flight out That's here. Right. All I, we can do know. is prime the pump. That's where the horsepower's got to come from. Last question. Um, I'm going to ask each of you what you look for in, in, in partners. So I'll start, Terry, with you. Um, as a technology company, large technology and, and services company, what do you look for in a, in a partner? I look for a couple things. I look for uh, executive, executive uh, connections, and I'll tell you with CAP, we, we talk weekly, monthly, we have QBRs, quarterly business reviews. Uh, we operate all the way from um, the very top all the way down into the field. Interestingly, uh, we just decided to uh, change some employees. So their, their, their portion oh, really? now aimed back at EMC, just came from EMC, we worked that together, we love it. And uh, so I like that. We were not stealing. <laughs> no, 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 we worked we work that very openly. I think the second thing that we really need from a company like Capgemini is industry expertise. That's not what we are, we're a horizontal company. And so when we go into a retail company or we go into a, uh, a telco, we need the expertise of a Capgemini and that's something that we desperately need and that's what we have great respect for these guys for. All right, and Charlie, what do you look for in a, in a technology uh, uh, supplier, not just even EMC, but generically any technology company? Well, first of all, innovation is extremely important. We want partners that can co-innovate with us, not just innovate in silos. We look for partners, you know, I'm going to use Terry's term earlier today, companies where we can build a mutual trust because you can't do business together without trust. And then finally, we want companies that are willing to do something different with us, right? Differentiated plays and dif differentiated markets, as well as in areas where uh, you know we can really create a big, a big, a big bet together, right? So having that mutual commitment, once you find that big bet, is extremely important to us. Just like what we did with Brazil, like what we did with Pivotal and VMware, having a mutual com financial commitment and then executing on it—that's what we look for. Big bets, and they, uh, they, the big bets can pay off, but big bets sometimes are risky, so you, you, working together, you can sort of deal with that risk and, uh, and, and identify the, the upside and minimize the downside. So uh, thanks, gentlemen, very much for coming on theCUBE. It was great Thank to have you. you. Thank you. Uh, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. We're live here at EMC World 2014. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back. <laughs>